Hello and welcome back to some more BitBurners. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to create a script that can automatically manage the products for you so that as soon as the demand goes lower than the competition, it's going to automatically discontinue the product and then regenerate a new product. There's really one last thing that I want to do before I make the corporation public. And um, this is basically just automatically um, automatically purchasing the advert ink to maximize the amount of revenue that we have um, in in relation to the advertising cost uh, what I mean by this is that when when we click on this when we purchase this uh, so have a look at the make sure that you look at this revenue amount so five two eight three uh, when you purchase the advertising ink uh, you could see that it increases our revenue and then also increases our profits. And the reason for this is because of the principle of um, the, the more popular your product is, the more you can charge for it, uh, meaning that it um, directly affects our profit. The relationship between the, the revenue and then the advertising cost, uh, so it sort of looks like this. Um, so if we represent the green line as, um, I guess, our revenue, uh, it starts off like this. So it's going to go up uh, and up and up. And then eventually it's going to flatten down until you create a new product with a higher budget. Uh, but the cost of the advertising uh, basically just goes up um, somewhat linearly. So it goes up and up and up like that until eventually... Um, the uh, the cost of advertising is bigger than the profit amount um, so what our marketer script will do is that it's gonna find the uh, I guess the number of upgrades uh, that we need to to um, I guess do until the advertising cost is greater than the profit amount and then this symbolizes that we need to increase the budget for generating the product I, I hope that makes sense but it's gonna make sense um, as soon as I create the script uh, so if we jump into the terminal and then we're gonna create a new script called corp marketer um, and again what this script will do is that it's gonna um, hire the um, it's gonna hire advert Inc until the profit amount is less than the advertising cost so I'm just gonna code up this uh, the script and then get back to you guys as soon as that's finished it looks like I finished um, so it's it's a very very short script um, basically if we scroll up to the top here first so the reason why I I ask for the division name uh, up here is because I want to be able to control when I want to hire the advertising because it does use up some of your money um, so um, so as soon as it's ready then I'm gonna run the script and then specify the division name and it's only gonna hire advertising for that division um, and then I do some uh, checks just to make sure that division name is defined before it starts running a whole bunch of stuff uh, and then we extract the corporation uh, API from the NetScript uh, module. Uh, down here is the main logic. Basically, what we do is we first grab the division profits. Uh, and then after that, we grab the advertising cost. Uh, and then if the profit amount is bigger than the cost, then we want to hire the advertising. Um, otherwise, we don't do anything and we just wait. Um, so for get division profits, it's kind of small, so we just grab the division from the corp API. And then the division has um, a few variables, so there's the last cycle revenue and last cycle expense. I'm not really sure how long it updates, but for some reason, the last cycle revenue updates every second. Uh, and then the, there's also an, another field which is, um, you know, this cycle revenue, but which sometimes returns zero for some reason. Um, so I just base the profits off the last cycle, then um, calculate the profit by um, subtracting the expenses from the revenue. And then I just do some logging just to um, see how much uh, the profit amount is. And then I just return that profit. Uh, for the advertising cost, we just use the get higher advert cost um, from the corporation API. And then we just print that out as well. And then we just return the cost. Um, and then we just do a normal comparison and then just call the higher advert uh, function from the corporation API. It, it's very small and simple. Uh, so if we run that... We would see that it's uh, currently hiring uh, the advertising 
and then if we go to corporation and then go to the division menu you'd see that advertising is uh rapidly becoming much more um expensive but our profit amount um increases with it um i'm gonna skip ahead to the video um until um, we reach the point where the advertising cost is um bigger than the profit amount all right so looks like we reach the maximum here so as you can see here the uh the profit amount is um smaller than the advertising uh because it eventually does that um, and the only way you can, um, I guess, increase your profit even more is by first developing a product of a higher budget. So, for example, this uh, these products are developed using, um, I think I'm, I'm using 20 quadrillion dollars of budget for uh, marketing and design. Uh, but if I want to increase the, uh, I guess, the profit amount, uh, I might invest in 100 quadrillion dollars on each of the product. So I'm going to just. I just have to rerun the uh, core product manager and then specify a new value here uh, to increase the amount of profits. Uh, the second way is to um, increase the number of employees you have. Um, and the reason for this is because the more employees you have, uh, the more items you can produce. Meaning that you you basically just increase the volume of stuff that you're you're selling, um, and then the third way of increasing the profits, uh, which is not related to the division, is by expanding to a new industry, uh, which I'm not gonna do until um, the next video. Um, all right, so that's I, I guess that's just what I wanted to cover for this video. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna be going public, and then showing guys what's new with that one. Um, because um, going public is how you get paid um, so all these um, you know these profit amount you can actually allocate a certain portion of that as uh, as dividends to your character um, and also buy back the shares that you um, I guess you know you sold to the initial investors but I'm gonna be covering that in the next video uh, but for now we're going to be covering the uh, the YouTube comments. So um, I'm going to be changing up the uh, structure of the YouTube uh, comments a little bit. And the reason for this is because what my analytics reported is that um, whenever we get to the YouTube comment section, there has been a massive drop in engagement. And this sort of tells me that you guys aren't getting any uh, value in uh, the YouTube comments. So what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm only going to mention the ones that is, uh, I guess, discussion worthy. So so things that um, I guess needs to be mentioned uh, to everyone that's watching this video. Uh, but don't, don't get me wrong, I I look at every single one of the comments and I try to comment or like them um, as soon as I can. Uh, but it's just so that um, the people watching this always get some sort of value from it. Um, and uh, so far, there's only one comment that I just want to mention to everyone, which is uh, the comment from Infinite Trial. So this is from Bitburner number six. Um, and he said, I've noticed that you're wasting resources using one script to either weaken, grow, or hack. It's true that your servers are under 100%, but a lot of it is just dead weight. Uh, let's say that you have one server with 20, 48 gigabytes of RAM and three scripts hack, weaken, and grow that each only contain their respective command. Uh, Pirate needs 2 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, hack needs 1.7 gigabytes. Weaken and Grow needs uh, 1.7 gigabytes. Uh, on the server, you could run one of the following: uh, 1024 Pirate JS for 100% load. 1204 Hack JS for 99.94% load. Uh, 1170 Weaken JS or Grow JS for 99.98% load. Uh, in that certain scenario, you would lose up to 15% of actual work power depending on the script you run. It only gets worse when the server size increases. Uh, it, it would be more efficient to split Pirate into its components and only call the ones that's needed at the moment. Apart from that, it's a great video. Keep up the good work. Uh, thanks for that comment, uh, Infinite Trial. Um, so just to explain to, uh, I guess, non-programmers or just elaborate a little bit further, uh, basically what he's suggesting is that um, if we split Pirate.js to its own smaller components, we can basically run a little bit more uh, scripts on the servers. Um, so he gave examples here. 
um, which he is entirely correct um, and I didn't really notice that until he um, he mentioned that because and the reason why two gigabytes uh, pirate JS is two gigabytes is because it includes all the hack weaken and grow uh, commands which uses up some of the uh, the RAM space um, I'm actually considering of modifying the launch fleet script to address some of the problems that people have been have been having uh, whenever they're using the launch fleet. So uh, the first change that I'm going to be making is probably uh, putting everything into one place. And the reason for this is because there's uh, different play styles for Bitburner players. Uh, some people uh, like the coding aspects of creating their own scripts and use my scripts as uh, some sort of resource to just uh, base their scripts from. And then they pull some uh, examples from all different places and then create their own stuff as well. Uh, some people uh, like to just copy and paste code from GitHub. Um, and there's really nothing wrong with that playstyle, um, but I just want to accommodate my scripts to uh, different people, uh, just so that they're uh, they can enjoy this game a little bit more. And if the 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 people that copy paste code gets enjoyment from copying and pasting code and then actually beating the game, then uh, so be it. Um, feel free to copy my my code and then put it in. Uh, I just want to reduce the amount of errors that you're having. Uh, the second is um, actually allocate uh, some of the home servers RAM um, because I noticed that there's uh, at least three comments so far that has been mentioned. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be modifying the launch fleet script to have a flag that allows you to um, include the home server whenever you're launching launch fleets and then another flag to allocate some of the memory and then if it's uh, you know if if that flag isn't um, uh, used or specified then it's just gonna allocate all your home servers RAM uh, and then the third one which is what you suggested is modifying the pirate strip to split into its own individual components so that we can maximize the uh, the resources that each server has uh, so yeah thanks for that uh, infinite trial um, I'm gonna be uh, I guess working on that as soon as I finish everything that I need to do for corporations and wh when I say everything I mean um, up to a point where we're just waiting for our hacking level to go up until we unlock the red pill so I think that's uh, sort of like the chill period of the game where um, everything that I need to do has been done and then it's just a whole ma a matter of grinding and waiting uh, so stay tuned for that um, but for now, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys what happens when you uh, make your uh, go public for your corporation and then some of the advantages of going public as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one.